And yeah, I know I'm holding this mic in front of my face, it looks stupid. I'll find time to print a mount for this. Okay, so this is not the very ideal way to set up my mic, but it'll have to do for now. Hi, so remember a while ago I said that I'm gonna print a stand for this mic so I don't have to keep putting it on weird objects? Well, today is when I do it. Logo. So this mic is designed to mount on the uh, hot shoe of a uh, DSLR, which means that the attachment over here is a pretty standard attachment. So I just have to measure this thing with a caliper and create a kind of bracket that's similar to this. Also, don't ask me why it's called a hot shoe. I don't know. This thing here is K and in this dimension, so 18 and a half millimeters should be good. Okay, cool. Now we have the measurements. So we basically just need to design a bracket that can hold this 1.8 millimeter uh, slot over here. And that leaves at least 4.5 millimeters of uh, space above it so that this screw can um, tighten it. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, now we have a little bracket. So now all that's left to do is to um, finish designing this platform and then designing a little tripod that goes underneath it. All right, so after some deliberation, I've decided to go with this swivel joint kind of. So on the bottom, it's gonna be attached to two more of these and a screw is gonna go through it and that screw can be tightened or loosened so that I can adjust the angle of this thing. So the way I designed this little platform up here is that I mainly took on uh, those sketches that I did and the measurements I, that I did and I went and basically uh, sketched those exact dimensions because when I wrote down those dimensions on the uh, inside the notebook I gave a tiny bit of tolerance for all the all the measurements so right now those are the uh, dimensions with tolerance. A thing to note here is that these dimensions over here, they're actually not hard-coded values. Those are um, connected to the values on the other side. I made it so that this way so that it's easier if I want to edit something, I can edit just this side and then this side also changes. And then the rest is just extruding this whole thing out. All right, so this is what the attachment is going to look like, how it's going to connect to the bottom piece. A screw is going to go in through here and then this top part will be free to rotate. Now all I gotta do is finish the bottom part with the uh, actual triangular thing that it stands on. All right, so here's a preliminary view. The base right now looks quite ugly and it's like that for a reason. Because I'm going to have the base be solid for now and then I'm going to um, use the uh, topology optimization study to let uh, Fusion decide what's the most material efficient way to uh, print the base. But for the rest of it, I think this whole uh, object here looks pretty good. So I actually ended up modifying the uh, model a little bit so that the uh, legs now are um, not a solid pyramid, but a more, uh, I guess, like material conserving kind of shape. And I've also, as you can see, kind of hollowed out the middle here because I don't think um, this much material in the middle will be necessary. But what's the most important is that now the topology optimization can process this base much better now that it's not full of material. So as you can see, this base layer here, uh, what I have done here is that I have basically constructed a whole bunch of construction lines and guidelines so that I can extrude these big triangles out from under the base. And now in order to do this topology optimization, we have to go into design and uh, go to simulation. So once you go into the uh, simulation view, you would want to select the uh, shape optimization. And what you do with this model is that you have to tell it, uh, for example, this base area, this is um, fixed. And uh, so you have to say the space here is fixed. Maybe you can add like a, a load up here and say that maybe this whole thing is going to take about, say, like three kilos of uh, force from the top. 
and you also can have it preserve certain regions. So let's say I don't want it to like do anything with my uh, very carefully designed uh, mount here. So I am going to put a green box around it so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't touch that when it's doing the optimization. So then after you're done with all that, there's this little checkbox over here that can tell you if you have given it all the information it requires to, to build this model. So as you can see, this is the way I did it, uh, where I protected this top part because I want that to stay mainly the same. I protected the bottom kind of like the bottom layer so that it um, keeps like the bottom leg from being kind of like gouged out. And I left the rest of this uh, heavy triangular base to um, its devices because that's what I want to get creative with. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and go to solve and it's going to say, okay, this will cost you five cloud credits. Usually I think a cloud credit is the equivalent of a dollar. Education licenses does have unlimited cloud credits. So here we are, these are the results of the simulation. As you can see, we got this very nice, um, very cool looking branches down here at the foot. It looks a bit rough right now, but it's going to look much better once it's smoothed it out. This little slider on the right here, this is kind of like how much you want it to uh, move things away. So the more you push it over here, the more it only retains like, like structurally critical things that are um, on the model. So after you get this whole thing, you can go back to your design, you can uh, promote it back into your design workspace and it's going to pr promote it into here as a, uh, a uh, mesh body kind of. Now this body here, I have already um, went into the mesh editor and smoothed out so you can see this actually looks a lot better. I think it looks really cool. Thing about mesh is that once you create this mesh, you can't make any like other big changes to it like you can do some like minor changes but no sketches no like extrudes or anything like that this is now like a baked in kind of shape so i guess like make sure you like what you see in the simulation view before you put it in here but now i think we pretty much have everything we need here so let's go ahead and splice this all right i have loaded the uh, model into my slicer it's looking pretty good. There's, it's gonna be printing a bunch of supports because of all of these gaps in there. But overall, for context, this model is much bigger than this vase over here. And yet, this weighs 34 grams. This vase weighs, uh, I think it was 100 something grams. So this is how you can see that optimization thing actually works really well. Okay, now let's go and set this up and print this. Okay, it's setting up and it's almost printing. And also don't mind this mess. I will explain what I'm doing with all these later. Actually, I don't know what, I'm do what I've am doing. what i been doing. I've just been making random circuits and I spent a very long time trying to solder these wires to this battery because I think apparently battery terminals are solder proof because I don't want you soldering onto it. So it took a while for the solder to actually like stick. Anyways, I think this printer is almost ready to print. Good morning, the print is done. I think it's looking pretty good and it's pretty solid and I think everything else printed, oh, it came off, it printed quite well. So let's get these supports off and see how this thing looks. Now, all we have to do is print the top part of this and then go to Home Depot to get a screw that will fit through here. Let's do this. Now what I think is really interesting is how organic this thing looks. And I think it makes sense because you know how like in nature, most things are pretty much optimized for either like maximum efficiency or maximum something. So I guess it would make sense for something that's been mathematically optimized to look like something from nature because it tends to be the best solution. All right, and the uh, platform thing also just finished printing and it fits the microphone pretty well and it also fits this tripod pretty well so it's time to go to home depot and get the screw actually i'm going to bring this part with me so that i can see if it fits Okay, 
so now for the moment of truth does this work so this goes pretty well inside this like that and now the screw that i got which is over here goes in through here and we will use this wing nut that i got to secure it the reason i got a wing nut is because it makes it easier to turn by hand so now this is nice and tight while still giving this some degree of movement actually i can loosen this a tiny bit more this has some degree of movement but it's mostly tight and now we just slide the microphone onto here and we are done okay this works really well so well, now i can just go ahead and put this thing anywhere it's really sturdy it's actually the sturdiest thing i think i've printed even though it looks like it might not be it's actually really sturdy so now that we have this i no longer have to put the microphone on this roll of paper towels <laughs>